we are back it is tape don't lie it is your favorite raiders podcast favorite raiders channel favorite raiders breakdowns favorite raiders whatever you guys already know what it is make sure you hit the subscribe button subscribe 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 if this is your first time here you know subscribe 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 if you like it hit the like button if you dislike it hit the dislike button if you like it leave a comment if you dislike it leave a comment too as well if you're hearing this on itunes make sure you hit the subscribe button there if you're hearing this on spotify hit the download for all silver and black pride podcast and also check out my boy holder handfuls my boy matt holder at m holder 95 also follow us on twitter at the mark john nfl for me and at biggie williams 18 for bd williams so yeah we're finally getting out this review to you guys and i know you, some of you guys probably been patiently waiting where's, where's the review coming where's the review it's here it's here we got the review for you coming uh, you know it's a bye week for us too you know you know we want to take a little chill chill out you know it's a bye week for us too guys I mean, it's a, yeah it's a bye week for us yeah. that's helpful <laughs> yeah right? this is you know we can be transparent with the audience this is the second attempt <laughs> at this video yeah i um some people have picked up on i've seen some comments I got, I got this cat and she's like in heat right now so i gotta like get her spayed or whatever it is you know but she's freaking out all the time so i gotta i gotta get i gotta get my cat handled you know what i'm saying so yeah mm -hmm. I, got, I got the cat locked away just for the duration of this episode don't worry don't call you know animal rights on me <laughs> They'll call animal rights but, on but yeah we got we got to get to this content we got to get this content to raider nation without a cat you know meowing yeah. in the background the entire time so so we're gonna exactly. jump into it you know um let's let's talk about it okay, okay. offense raiders played lights out two mm -hmm. weeks in a row i think we're seeing yeah. some different volume in the run game you know uh what are you seeing on on film that's you know more impressive since uh Olsen has taken over uh I mean one thing that's more impressive is just you know how they're at their um moving the football without third down I think it's the second week in a row they didn't have many third downs um I mean they only had they have uh six third downs going into the fourth quarter and they were up what 30 to 7 um you know against the Broncos they only they had 11 third downs I mean they had nine this week so I mean a lot of their third down third downs are not as you know prevalent as they were before especially you know when you look at previous weeks uh, i mean they're they're pretty high up there when it comes to you know like you know third down and and different things like that so uh i mean just just for example let's say against you know the dolphins you know they had 15 third downs right and then even against the steelers they had 13 so you you, you kind of see a trend from the first two weeks that they're not depending on third down as much and they're getting more explosive plays on second down. So this week they got 30% of 30% explosive plays on second down. I mean, Derek Carr, his uh, success rate on third down was about uh, on second down was about 93%. So I mean, we saw a lot of excitement from this Raiders team on uh, second down. It, it was pretty a clinic basically it was straight up clinic and then we're seeing more 11 personnel from them too uh i mean they ran out of 11 personnel they had 70 percent success rate on 11 personnel so um it, it's just this is a, a a more efficient offense they just move the ball at will basically and they avoid how much their better do you think car in the offense feels not having to like convert a third down every, you know every three plays in order to keep the track like you know, like that's not sustainable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the, just like the stress of like constantly having to like convert third and four or third and six or whatever it is, yeah. you know, like um, that, that's, that's something that's huge, you know, and I really think it probably puts a huge handicap on the defense too, like third and long, like that's what a defensive coordinator wants to see. Mm -hmm. That's when he can start throwing stuff at you that you've never seen before and he can start confusing you. But if the Raiders are never in third down, like it just kills a game plan, kills the yeah. defensive game plan. Yeah, it, it it does, and then you're able to move the football, you know, at will too. If if you're not avoid, if you're avoiding third down altogether, and you know that was something a goal that I wanted them to to have for a while is to be more aggressive, and especially with all the explosive plays they had, they had like a, a bunch of huge plays, and and you know the touchdown to Foster Moreau, you know the screen pass to Josh Jacobs, um, a lot of big plays around second down, so. I mean, that's what you want to do. You want to, you know, get those, uh, you know, get up to like second and four and then attack 
or to like a play action deep shot right. or, or something like that. Or like to play that out in goal where, you know, it's, it's a run situation. You just want to run the clock and you, then you do like a, a play action leak, right. With the fullback, you know what I'm saying? Like things like that, get explosive plays on second down. So that, that was something I really liked when I was watching it. Uh, so why don't you, uh, why don't you jump into it? What are you going to show us today? Uh, so I'm showing uh, the run game mostly. I'm, I'm kind of highlight the running backs. I think they're, they've been um, kind of a little bit unlocked. Uh, the last two weeks, we're seeing a lot more explosiveness from both of them. So um, kind of want to, you know, do a little deep dive into what they're doing. And then, you know, I know people are interested of, in what happened with the run game, right? And uh, and what they're doing and, you know, Andre James making good blocks and all that good stuff. So we're going to do a full breakdown on that and trying to look at the, the run game. We're calling this one Drake and Josh. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's a, a Disney reference, Nickelodeon reference. I, I still can't remember which one this is. Don't know. But... We're doing that reference and we're going over Kenyon Drake and Josh Jacobs. So we're gonna start off with Kenyon Drake first. We're gonna do most of his carries and get to Josh Jacobs. So we're gonna start with insides, inside zone slice, right? So you got the inside zone. So you got Andre James, you got the double teams right there. The ace blocks before Andre James carries up to the linebacker. And then we got the split zone action, uh, the split zone block from Foster Moreau. Then you see a great run here by Kenyon Drake and his body's on the floor, pancakes everywhere from the offensive line. Nice little cutback right there from Kenyon Drake. Awesome, awesome play. So this is a new run play that we know we really haven't seen too much from the Raiders, which is a wham block. So like I said, if we just ran inside zone slice, right? With Foster Moreau coming around, let's switch it up. Let's switch it up to a wham block where he double teams Javon Hargrave right there. So, you know, you see it. Well, Andre James still inside zone. So Andre James hits, uh, makes that combo block and gets up to, to the linebacker. Foster Moreau, he blocks uh, Javon Hargrave. Alec Ingold opens up that hole with a huge block. He had a great game. And you see the big run there from Kenyon Drake. So there's huge holes this game. Guys being able to move and with the football. And this is a, a different one too. You know, this is kind of like a, um, an inside zone, but Kenyon Drake is making an outside zone step, right? So it confuses, fuses defensive line. They think it's going to be outside zone with his open step and kind of the way the Raiders fake that out with the block creates a big hole for the inside zone, right? And then you see zone lead wham again here. This is going to work again. Same run play, double teams, Alec Ingle one-on-one -one with the linebacker, Kenyon Drake gets it, keeps his legs moving. They get a good push, get 11 yards right down to the goal line, right? And then... Of course, this is uh, Kenyon Drake showing some great vision that you know we've been missing that we saw, I saw on tape a lot last year when he was with the Cardinals is the awesome vision that he has and you see it again here on the inside zone slice, right? He sees the he sees the backside cut touchdown, right? It was some great blocks, Leatherwood with the pancakes, Simpson with a great block, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of pancakes in this game, pancakes, I hop is everywhere here. And then you see Kenyon Drake one more time, some good blocks there. He sees the cut back, right? Got Foster Moreau on the lead this time. Andre James could hold that block a little bit better. That's probably a bigger run. You know, you know Javon Hargrave is a big boy. Um, you know what I'm saying? And you you do want Andre James to get a little more push than he's getting, but it is what it is. So you got Kenyon Drake in the in the passing game too. He's always still there. You know, right there on the uh, the halfback choice route, making the catch, getting the yardage. So you know, Kenyon Drake. He had a really good game, you know, 69 yards and 14 carries. This catch right here, and you know, he was showing that he what the running back that you thought was coming in and getting paid for six million. We're seeing more of that the last two weeks, so it's pretty special. But I still think this is a Josh Jacobs offense. He's playing most of the snaps. You're seeing here on the inside zone, he's able to read that correctly and find the right hole, get there, be decisive, put his pads down, get a good five yards for a successful run. See him here again on the inside zone one more time right i like to show this one because it shows that he's you know he's playing like he's healthy i know his chest hurts but you see andre james getting pushed back a little bit right there he's able to make a quick little jump cut and get four yards get a positive gain another successful nice. run from josh jacobs right good run, good run man. yeah yeah that's a good run from josh jacobs and you got zone lead here which is gonna be some awesome blocking from this offensive line here you see it uh, john simpson andre james gets up to the second level you know and uh, that allows josh jacobs to get up to the second level too he's able to make a nice run right there so you see the, uh, the offensive line has been dominating and making big holes all game and then of course you got the inside zone here on this one usually you don't want to bounce this but you know he made the right decision you know right here you probably get yelled at by his, his running back coach but touchdown nobody cares 
right? But what I wanted to point out, though, the most about Josh Jacobs is how much that he's in the game in passing situations. So you see here, four verts, play action, right? Drop that ball off to Josh Jacobs. He does his thing, makes a play of that could be five yards, turns it into 13 or 14. So you'd love that from Josh Jacobs, right? Nice big play right there on that one. First down on the check down. Then you see uh, right here again, you had Z Curl from the Raiders. You know, he's got the swing route. Derek Carr reads it correctly, hits him on the swing route. He makes his little uh, fancy one-handed catch there. Get six yards, right? So we're seeing him more in in, in the pass game and then with their willingness to throw him the football. You know, and we see that one-handed catch that, of course, only me and BD tweeted about because, you know, I guess we're coaches and, you know, it's kind of it was unnecessary. But, you know, hey, right? <laughs> nice little accurate pass right there on the swing route to Josh Jacobs. And then, of course, we got the screenplay, right? So we're seeing Josh Jacobs get more involved in the pass game guys and you know that's that's what he was drafted for that's why he was draft first round pick that's why he was looked at as a first round pick because he what he brought to the pass game and we're seeing greg olsen use him more and even he's even blocking more than he has before so we're seeing him become that the uh, three down back that the first round back you drafted right. you expected to see and that's a great thing that we're seeing and we're excited about that so you know greg olsen you know, Jacoby Ford pointed that out that, you know, he uses his weapons, right? Jacoby Ford made that tweet about how Greg Olson utilizes his weapons and that's what he does. And I mean, that's what, that's what we're seeing guys. We're seeing him utilize the weapons how they need to be utilized. Um, you know, uh, Josh Jacobs, he's getting more involved in the passing game. He's making more, you know, he's making more uh, plays in the run game. You're seeing Kenyon Drake get loose a little bit because they're designing more runs that have more power elements to him. Because, you know, if you, you have a wham like that, I mean, it creates the vision for him. He doesn't have to think as much with his own stuff. He could just hit the hole, right? He could just go straight, right. hit holes, right? He doesn't have to think. And he could just use his vision and just, uh, where's the hole at? You know what I mean? It's not, not more so where's the read at like it is with zones. Zones more, where's the read? I mean, how am I reading this? Instead of just, where's the hole go? You know what I mean? Right. And I think that's why Kenyon Drake is doing a little bit better as a runner too in this game. So I, I do think that, uh, you know, with how the offense is and he's the running back dynamic, I still think we're going to see mostly Jake Jacobs. I mean, he plays 65% of the snaps because the Broncos, you know, he was on the, he, was, he barely, I mean, Drake barely played in the first half. Let me just say that. So since he wasn't getting many snaps in the first half and the way Jacobs was running the football and catching the football, I would expect to see a whole lot more of Josh Jacobs. If you have it on your fantasy team, I suggest that you play him because he's going to get more catches and get more involved as the season goes along. Um, something that was really exciting to me watching your breakdown was like the increase in volume in the run game, like just the different schemes that they're running. If Even if it's just a wrinkle, like adding that wham block, you know, mm -hmm. have, have yeah. we seen that before? No, we haven't. Right. right. You know, uh, so, so stuff like that, we have not seen a wham under John Gruden that you want it, you'd, you'd like to see a run game have these little, little different wrinkles because then that's when your run game goes on ESPN and, you know, Dan Arlovsky's like showing like, Oh, look at this crazy blocking scheme. And, you know, like, yeah. this is why they're so good at running the ball. We haven't seen that in a long time for the Raiders. It's been very vanilla. So I think it's really encouraging to see like the run game being unlocked as a result of just, you know, adding some wrinkles. Yeah. Yeah. Me too, man. And then, you know, because last week, I mean, we saw a lot of different runs from the RPO game that we didn't see this week. So um, this this week was more uh, under center, a little bit some shotgun runs, but it was more under center, a little bit more power um, inside zone type of looks. Not a lot of outside zone, uh, not a lot of mid zone that we saw last week. So that shows that how versatile the run game is getting, because a lot of the runs we saw against the Broncos, we didn't see this week. Like, you know, the counter bash, the at the the goal line that Jacob scored touchdown against the Broncos. We didn't see that this week. We didn't see any of those runs. So for that to to to, to happen, you know, it 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 is a good thing. It, it helps out. It helps out a lot, and it helps the the, the run game, and it helps the pass game, and the play action game, and everything. So, you know, it, and there's a lot of lot teams that can you know do both. And the Raiders right now, they look like they're gonna do both right now. So it's exciting. Yeah. Um, any other final thoughts about the offense? Uh, no, I mean, uh, offensive line looked really good. I mean, uh, Leatherwood looks better inside. I think James probably had one of his better games. Um, you know, Derek Carr is playing, he's playing his mind off. He's playing pretty elite football right now the past couple of weeks. Uh, you know, the MVP talk started off early just because he was throwing a lot of yards. But I think right now he's playing like more at that level that people thought he was 
at the beginning of the year, he's just more efficient, more flawless. You know what I'm saying? He's ranked uh, eighth in adjusted, adjusted net yards per attempt at this point. So he raised from 20th to eighth in two weeks. So hopefully he keeps that up and then he'll really be in the MVP conversation for real. So um, that'll be a real actual talk that we could have instead of just us happy that he's throwing a lot of yards. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's uh, his outlook is, is great. Cause if he keeps playing the way he's playing, then, the Raiders are going to make the playoffs for sure. But Is that the best game of Derek Carr's career? I wouldn't say that. I think the Chiefs game last year was the Chiefs best game, game of his career. Best game of his career? Yeah, just because of the situation and the moment and how he played. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, like, 93% completion percentage. Like, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, he's locked in. Like, this guy's, like, flawless. Yeah, you know? he's super locked in. So, uh, yeah, um, he's super locked in. Yeah. Well, I mean, also – he, th- he threw that. It probably wasn't a great little pass to Jalen Richard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but freak play that it bounced off Jalen Richard's hands right into a, a you know defender's yeah. hands. Like uh-huh. that's re- that's really weird. But we've seen weirder things happen to Derek Carr, obviously. But it, mm-hmm. I think that that's a good that's a good way to show people. Like, look how locked in Derek Carr was. He still threw an interception because you make one mistake in the NFL, like it could go really wrong for you you know so like you know you can be perfect all game and you have like one critical error and you lose a game because of stuff like that you know it's hard to win in the nfl the level of like technique and perfection that you have to have just to be successful is is really mind-blowing that these athletes are able to do this so uh i thought that that's a good example of something like that where it's like he was playing so well but still yeah i mean he still made a mistake right right yeah um Okay, so how about we transition into the defensive side yeah. of the ball? Um, you know, Raiders defense, I think, has been playing. It's, it's interesting, you know, both these weeks, Denver and, uh, you know, Philly, since the John Gruden exit, it seems like the defense is like, okay, for like, after the first drive, because it seems like, teams are like driving down and scoring on the first drive pretty often right right now but Mm -hmm. it's like that second drive to like the seventh or eighth drive pretty consistently throughout like these first six weeks of of gus bradley like teams are not scoring like he's getting them figured out and it's just like a long stretch of them not scoring even even against the chargers he was able to do that Mm -hmm. for for a little bit you know and then ideally Raiders score a bunch of points and it turns like, you know, the, the game plan into like single, you know, just like not being dynamic. And the Raiders did that this week, you know, the, the offense scored 30 unanswered points. That means the defense is getting out there and doing yeah. their job. Right. Yeah. But then it also seems like these last two weeks too, is like something like the foot comes off the gas pedal a little bit. And then these teams are able to like create a little, like some of these, like you can call them garbage time touchdowns. Okay. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, you know, uh, but we saw Jacoby Brissett's garbage time touchdown turn into a game, you know, overtime to fifth period, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so like th- that's something that is con- consistently happening. It's like the Raiders doing a great job on defense in the beginning, like lights out, shut down in mm-hmm. the beginning of the game, and then towards the end of the game, they're kind of letting some points out. So I think that that's something to uh, you know keep an eye on, you know. Okay. Uh, but here, let me just jump into it. We'll talk about Unique and Gakwe. Okay. He had a great game, most impactful defender on the, on the field. We see him here with the patented cross chop, and then to also have that ankle flexibility to turn that corner right there at that angle uh, and finish. You know, it's just he's he's a dangerous pass rusher when he has that speed. Him playing at this level that he's playing while Max Crosby, it's it's a great thing to see in this defense. And then you see him here; he's stopping the run. Okay, beats that guy inside, can go either way, okay, chooses correctly. We see him here. It's not just rushing the passer. He was making plays all over the field, okay, just like this one here. Recognizes a little screen pass, bats the ball down. You know, and this is another one where he gets some, some ball production, kind of tips that ball. Errant pass should have been an interception by Corey Lothan. Should have created that pick interception. Pick six. Pick six for sure, yeah. And then also, obviously, Inside move, okay, hustle, sack, shoestring sack, okay, and then check this out here. He's got his foot in the ground before anyone else has his hand out of the ground. How is he guessing 
the snap count like that. Maybe there was a, some kind of some kind of tell that Jalen Hurts was doing that let him guess that snap count. But anyways, let's talk about the game plan versus the game plan. So Philly's game plan. They came out. They came out low key cooking. Okay, here we go. We got a little short motion play action pass this backside of the formation stays in we got a three-man route but check out how this route concept affects these linebackers here it really puts them in a bind Corey littleton starts opening up thinking okay crosser it's gonna go across the field but wait nope he comes back around in denzel perryman's coverage perryman was not ready for that big play in the passing game okay they're messing with uh, linebackers reads here we go we got face on pointing it out i don't know if the communication got in but Corey Littleton either didn't hear it or thought that Perryman was going to pick it up. Either way, big hole in the defense. No one's covering out there for the Raiders against cover three. So did Gus Bradley adjust? The answer is no. He did not adjust. They still played cover three the entire game. He said, you're not going to out-execute us. We will not be trying to scheme you guys up here, okay? It was completely disrespectful. Look at, look at J Jonathan Abram. He's saying, don't take me out of the box, coach. I want to get in on tackles like this right okay some, some other thing with Jonathan Abram here hurts as an RPO if Abram backs out he's gonna give if Abram comes up he's gonna throw that slant right over the top of Abram's head but look what they're doing to the passing lane here Abram and Littleton making it real tough for Jalen Hurts to find a passing lane Brandon face on finishes up with the PBU okay and you got other guys here like they're just making plays here look at Quentin Jefferson here recognizes the little trap block spins off of it tracks down this running back okay finds the ball and rips it out great wherewithal great play making right there Raiders get, get the ball back but this play right here just really kind of encapsulates why just Gus Bradley didn't game plan for the Eagles okay this is a self-inflicted error right here I've never seen a guard swat the ball out of the air when he's pulling um you know they, so they didn't adjust, okay? 90% of the calls were at cover three in week seven compared to 66% all year. They had a similar stop rate in, while they were in cover three. Uh, but you know, like this 90% cover three, yeah, that's second highest of the, of the year. But let's look at some problem areas here, okay? I mean, running so much cover three, you're gonna get exposed at times. And I think really the biggest weakness is Denzel Perriman, you see him here, He's trying to drive on this te this Texas route. The angle route just takes a funny angle. Gets beat for a touchdown right there. Okay, Denzel Perryman. Again, right here, we got a boo action. Okay, you got to lock onto some guy and run with him who's in your zone. Perryman can't, can't run stride for stride with the wide receiver. Obviously, he's going to get picked on, okay? The other area that the Raiders struggled in and continue to struggle in is stopping quarterback scrambles here. We see them. They're trying to keep Jalen Hurts in the pocket, okay? But... One guy loses his lane and Jalen Hurts can scramble for a first down here, okay? On third and four, scramble for a first down. Here we go, he, uh, we got Clean Furrow going for an inside move. Hurts is able to escape outside of the pocket, making plays on the run. Gosh, wide receiver just mossing three Raiders players right there. Come on, man. Got to keep Jalen Hurts in the pocket. We talked about it before, make him play quarterback from inside the pocket. At time, obviously, proofs in the pudding, they won. Mm -hmm. It did get a little close. And I think if not for that crazy fumble where the guard swatted the ball out of the midair, right? Mm -hmm. If they score right there, it's a game at the end of the game. You know, yeah. like, it's potential that that goes to overtime, you know? So, and, it's, and that's just like a freak thing. So, yes, you got to give the Raiders credit, like where credit is due, pass rush, doing great things, right? Um, and obviously Gus Bradley didn't feel the need to like start calling cover four or cover five or anything like that. He didn't, he wasn't worried about Jalen Hurts. Uh, but there were some issues that keep on popping up for this Raiders defense, like stopping scrambling quarterbacks, for instance, you know, um, that hopefully that they're going to take this bye week time to figure it out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I mean, I, I, I think the Eagles kind of do that to everybody. I know it happened the week before, but I mean, they're like garbage time kings. It happened so, to everyone, yeah. yeah. yeah so Jalen Hurts gets all his fantasy points, man. It's in the fourth quarter when they're down 30 to seven and he racks it up. And then you're losing in fantasy to the guy who has Jalen Hurts because Jalen Hurts finishes with a, two rushing touchdowns and a touchdown that he got in the fourth quarter down 45 to, to seven. So um, <laughs> it's true though. Uh, so 
so that's a little bit of that, a little bit of garbage time stuff. Uh, I don't know. Who knows? I mean, if they score touchdown on that, I mean, maybe the offense takes it more serious and they're more aggressive because there's more time on the clock. You could take it that way too. Um, right. That's true. But that's I mean, you, 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 you do have a point there that like it, it would have, it might have been a closer game. They do score in that. And I just think like the cover three system is like built for garbage time too. So if they're up like 30 to seven, like teams can just, you know, if they just want to start taking whatever they, what's in front of them, right. And trying to score touchdowns. Um, that could happen, but I think in this game too, what I felt like that it would have been like too slow too, though, like what the Eagles were doing, like it, it took a lot of time. Like even when the Raiders like did the, the three the three runs or they're up thirty three twenty two, when they got the ball back and had a chance to like go and maybe have it score a touchdown and then get an onside kick, they're just moving the ball too slow because the Raiders stopped the deep ball so well. So, I mean, yeah. it'd be interesting when the Raiders are up, you know how. Um, different teams attack them it, it, it's just more to me when we start playing better passing the offenses like how they're gonna look yeah i think that's when we're when we play the cowboys and yeah. the Bengals, and, and when and they the played Chiefs steelers too. they're in cover four their entire cover four package they're getting into all different types of cover one cover one robert cover one cross like you name it they're getting into cover five some cover five cover five mm-hmm. looks they got different blitzes that they'll get into you know, like he had his whole like Gus Bradley had his like whole defense basically that he was calling against Ben Roethlisberger. But we've seen against Jalen Hurts, like mm. he was just like, "Nah, we're not even worried about all that. Like, let's just get out there and play ball on you guys." Uh, so, I mean, this it's interesting. It takes it makes charting turn into something different. Like charting before for me was like, okay, what how are the Raiders like in this coverage versus this coverage? You know, like what players are making stops and like impact plays. Now it's just like. I'm, I'm just like literally writing down like the same cover three call over and over and over and over and over, and over again. It's just like, okay, it's cover three. Like <laughs> there's nothing to chart here. It's just a game where they play the same thing the entire time, you know? So uh, it, it, it's definitely interesting approach. Uh, it, it's kind of refreshing because it's, Gus Bradley's like, I'm not here to out scheme you. We're just going to outplay you. So, but I think that's pretty funny. Yeah. It's, um, um, oh shit, man. The player just died the field like crazy anyways um, what just, happened? <laughs> the game the games this dude just like he just uh, he looks collapsed like out yeah they, no he just they like rushed to the field though like the game stopped so uh, it was looking crazy but anyways um what was it say and i thought i was trying to <laughs> I, was trying to stop, I was like oh crap he's like his body just like went numb <laughs> anyways um yeah so like uh I totally forgot what I was talking about, bro. So, no, um, <laughs> I was talking about, oh, yeah, I guess Bradley, like, not scheming. Yeah. I was, what I was going to say. Oh, so, I mean, when they play, uh, different offenses, I mean, he's going to have to, to do different yeah. things. He's going to have to. I mean, like, especially when you got Jamar Chase and those dudes coming into yeah. town, which is going to test Casey Hayward. I think we're going to find out how, how good Casey Hayward is that week. We just got to go against the young buck. Uh, is that that young buck who's just, you know, he's just killing everybody. He's killing Marlon Humphrey and, all of those guys so that's gonna be a big matchup and you know of course you got mari cooper and those boys and cd lamb and those guys coming in and of course they're gonna attack the inside um you're gonna attack denzel perryman and those guys as well especially i mean some people teams might copy some of the stuff the eagles are doing right um so she's at that they uh, were that cooking man they had some good stuff in their yeah. game plan for sure i was like okay like these guys came with a serious game plan here these yeah. eagles you know so uh yeah. it's some nasty stuff some stuff that I, we haven't seen teams hurt the Raiders with like the Chargers are like okay we're gonna take everything that has worked against the Raiders mm-hmm. and throw them at throw it at them this game and like see if they're able to stop it and then yeah like the Raiders weren't able to stop it obviously and then the offense had a terrible game too yeah but um you know this week Eagles had like their own little wrinkles so I thought that was pretty funny to see um so yeah I, to going back to what you're saying about Denzel Perryman so I think that yeah f- so f- first of all first of all Denzel Perryman playing phenomenal against the run like this year it's a joy to watch his run fits just anytime he like comes like downhill screaming downhill like 100 miles per hour and he hits that you know uh running back in the hole or he make makes contact with the guard you know like almost in the back of the guard has no leverage he's you know he's like Denzel Perriman is delivering these blows right yeah it's so fun to watch but then against the pass game he just gets abused he gets absolutely abused so you got to call it like you see it, you know, like on one hand, if we're talking about Denzel Perryman, 
I am acknowledging all the great things he does against the run. He's like making the biggest impact against the run over any player on the, on the Raiders defense by far. Okay. But at the same time, I think at some point the Raiders are going to have to come up with a plan to sub him out of the, out of the game on third and longs. He doesn't need to be in there because he's not, he, he's just not a plus in coverage whatsoever, mm-hmm. you know, like against anything. So it's, um, I don't know what that's, what that would look like. If that's another linebacker that comes in, maybe Nicholas Morrow can come back at some point this, this year, you know, and, and take the reins there. Nick Wikowski is not enough of an improvement in coverage. It's just like very slight. It would be like, yeah, yeah. maybe he'll like, contest some underneath stuff but like you know that running with that crosser or something like that like no like Denzel Perry was not doing that Nick Wikowski's not doing doing that either right yeah uh, so it's, it's it's not enough of a, of a bonus to like sub really Nick Wikowski in Raiders gonna have to do something about that spot in the in the defense because right now every team is just throwing the stick route and Denzel Perryman is like coming up and sometimes he's tackling it sometimes he's missing the tackle they're getting like 12 13 yards a chunk targeting dental pyramid it's like an automatic yeah. first down for them yeah man i mean teams are gonna keep doing that until while he's out there and yeah you can stop the run but i mean like i said we gotta get to more of these teams that are past they pass the football right you know that's where we're gonna get closer to especially these better teams especially like the chiefs um the cowboys and the Bengals. i mean that 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 that's a crazy run right there three games in a row so i mean the raiders have to be prepared defensively for those teams i think because bradley will i think he's gonna switch it up a little bit um i mean we've seen him switch it up against better quarterbacks so um since he's 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 has switched it up before i expect that again especially against like Dak or yeah Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna need to he's gonna need to i was just looking it up i have perryman giving up 13 first downs god damn which is the highest mark of anyone in coverage this uh this year Littleton has 10. He's given up 10 first downs. Um, and, but Perryman has given up two, 274 yards on 24 catches, 30 targets. According to my charting, the next highest is 160. So he's given up like over 100 yards more than the next guy. You know, like it's, it's, a, gla- it's a glaring weakness in the passing game. So it just has to come down to, I think, having a creative sub package, right? Um, whether that means like having Jonathan Abram come in and, and be involved as a, you know, a run player first, you know, to give that kind of explosiveness, you know, not taking away too much against the run or whatever it is, but they're going to have to get creative because right now it's not, it's not working. And ho- maybe we'll see that change when Nicholas Morrow comes back, but the way that Denzel Perryman's playing against the run, you can't just say, okay, you're not playing anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and- like, it's a sub package thing. Yeah, that's the that's the big problem because you're playing so well against the run. And that's what teams want to do against the Raiders because you know that's their weakness. You need somebody like Denzel Perriman in there, but it doesn't make him a liability in the pass game, though. And like I said, against better teams, he's gonna get attacked, man. It's like the Bengals are they got to put Tyler Boyd on him, they're gonna yeah. put CD Lamb on him, they're gonna put those type of players from with these better teams that we're playing against, they're gonna put those guys inside and match them up with Denzel Perriman against the cover three. So they gotta be prepared for that, man. Um I don't know. Like, uh, yeah. Maybe against those teams, he doesn't play as much, you know, and then you play, go play against the Browns or something and the Redskins and then he plays more, but maybe against like the Bengals and the Cowboys or the Chiefs. I mean, maybe he just doesn't play as many snaps. And I think you, that's kind of the chance to take because, I mean, yeah, the Cowboys will run the ball down your throat, but I, I mean, I don't think the bank, the Bengals might, they might try to, you know, they might do that too, but I, I know the Chiefs aren't. So, you know, like he, I don't think he should be playing that much that game. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. I think um, I, I agree with you. You know, Dallas, that's a tough one. Like you're saying, they can run and pass, you know, but yeah, against the Chiefs, like it's not a big deal. If Clyde, Herbert, Clyde Edwards Hilaire has 98 yards rushing, like who cares? Yeah, they're not going to keep it up. He's not going to have 25 carries. No way. No way. They're going to get to 10 and be like, well, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, We're running right, too much. Right, right. <laughs> so so yeah um i completely agree with you on that uh yeah. so that that's it uh on my end uh talking about the defense here um uh, that's all i have any any other last thoughts before we leave uh no uh no other last thoughts really um you know i do think it's interesting 
how, you know, the Raiders are still kind of, you know, slept on a little bit. I, I think it will keep the hunger with the team. I just hope they, you know, go into New York and handle business. I know it's going to be a one o'clock, you know, 10 o'clock game. They just got to go in there and handle business. I think the defense will more than, uh, you know, the offense maybe, but I still think they got to go handle business, but, you know, I think they still got a lot to prove. And this, uh, this East coast trip yeah. to the stadium, especially is tough for the Raiders. It has been historically, you know, seems yeah. like the Jets here a lot, same stadium mm-hmm. that the Giants and the Jets uh, share. So yeah. I, yeah, I, I agree. Hopefully we see the defense that uh, travel and everything. I think that they're down a quarterback. And the quarterback's not coming back till after the Raiders game. So, uh, oh no, never mind, never mind. I'm thinking about the Jets now. No. You think about the Jets? Uh, but yeah, Dan, 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 yeah, Danny Dan, Dimes is playing. Mm-hmm. He's all right. Uh, I mean, we'll get into the preview later. We'll probably come back with another episode even before the preview. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're, we're trying to figure out something for you yeah, guys. 100%. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, real quick, before the trade deadline comes, what's one? Who's one player that needs to be traded? There's only it one needs right. to be. Yeah, it needs to be traded before the trade deadline. Uh, Damon so, Arnett. Okay, okay, Arnett. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. I'm saying Clee. I, I, I just I thought you were gonna go. That's what I thought, but I just wanted to be different. Get get him out of here. Get him out of here. Just 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 send him off. Patriots will take him, guaranteed. Oh yeah, <laughs> they probably would, bro. The turn him into or be mad. Turn him into Trey Flowers. Yeah, he'll get be Trey Flowers for them for sure. <laughs> Then he gets paid sixteen million and just yeah. fades off, and then just fades away. And never gets another sack for the rest of his life. Um, <laughs> for sure, for sure, yeah. Uh, so like a two gap team, they would take him for sure. Anyways, yeah, yeah but uh, hopefully they can uh, get Cleveland Farrell out of there because he's he's not uh, adding anything as a pass rusher. And I think either Malcolm Coons has to get going here because like Carl Nassib, we've seen him; he's made impact. Okay, we're gonna take that from Carl yeah. Nassib, right? Clean for all, not made it, not made an impact, okay, um, at all. He's coming in, he's playing, he's just like kind of disappearing in the game. If Malcolm Coons can't go, then yeah, maybe we try to, to where he's trying to do something mm-hmm. in terms of like you know getting the guy off the street to come in here and bolster this pass rush a little bit because Max Crosby, you know, uh, Unique and Godwin go out. That's what's stirring this the the drink on defense. Yeah. Uh huh. Right. Like you got to have that pass rush, otherwise it's not it's not going to work. So. That's why. That's why I'm saying Cleveland for all. Get him out of there. Let's get another defensive end. Because are, 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 are you defense. saying a trade from Melvin Ingram's on the? Or is that what you're? Are you saying a so, trade Cleveland yeah. Farrell from Melvin Ingram? Is that what you're um, saying? Yeah, okay. Here's the thing, though. Melvin Ingram, he doesn't like what his role has been reduced to. He wanted to start on the opposite side of T.J. Watt or whatever, and they like yeah. this other guy, Outside. Highsmith. Highsmith, right? Yeah, who's younger and has. I like Highsmith. I, I, yeah, yeah he's, he's, good, he's a good player. He's a good player. Yeah, yeah. So, but Ingram is is upset about this. He's not going to come to the Raiders like it's Crosby and Unique and Gakwe show. It's like he'd still be in the same situation. So I don't think that he wants to come to the Raiders. He wants but, to start, and he thinks he he sees himself as a starter. He's probably not, but yeah. Yeah, I can see Gus Bradley convincing him though if like something happened, just I, like I, KJ Wright because KJ Wright plays no minutes. Yeah, he's he like, all. yeah, I'm coming. Let's go do this. <laughs> Let's do this, right? So, and then, you know, he used to lead, move Melvin around a lot. So, like, he, he did. I don't, he, I don't even see, like, I wouldn't expect to see. And then he might send five more if Melvin's out there and get more pressure that way. So, I don't know, man. It's I'm an idea. Saying, if, you, if you want to treat Flair early, you, you know, I mean, he's better than Nassib. I'm sure, I'm sure if he came, he would hop right over Nassib. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <In> that rotation. <laughs> yes. Be he'd probably be on there on third down way more often than you would think. Oh yeah, inside and he'd stuff probably like only that. go on third downs. That'd be like, like his contract is like only a third down player. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because because I saw somebody <laughs> talk about he he's gonna help the run. That's not that's not true, guys. He's not gonna help the run. <laughs> no. I think I think Raiders pl- players think uh, Melvin Ingram is better against the run than he is because he plays the run better against the Raiders than he does like usually. <laughs> You know, like uh, yeah. it's like a division thing. You know, like that's that's what it is. You yeah, know? like like a lot of Raiders fans like don't think that Von Miller is like great anymore because every time they see him, like the Raiders have done like the last few years, done a good job of like blocking him up. So they're like, ah, Von Miller's over the hill. You know, but like yeah. he's like wrecking other teams. So yeah, like they <laughs> Raiders fans like they only see what the opponents do to the Raiders, and you know, a lot of them aren't watching like games and you know trying to like see other players so yeah yeah melvin ingram uh i it would be interesting if they could convince him yeah as a third pass rusher heck yeah but he's not number two so 
He's yeah, he's not gonna be number two, but I'm just saying that that is something that's out there. That I mean, he wants to be traded, and uh, he doesn't have a crazy contract. And I mean, he is he he would be an upgrade over Nassif. He would. I watched him on tape this yeah. year. I mean, he looks damn good. He looked good. Um, he looked good. Um, I mean, they just want to play Highsmith over there, which is understandable. I understand that. I mean, he probably I don't know why he 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 probably thought he'd just go and outplay Highsmith and they'll just keep playing him, but I don't think he outplayed Highsmith enough where especially Highsmith plays a run better than he does so there you go that's probably why he's not playing but i mean you come to the raiders man you ain't gotta play the run bro you know you could just rush from D they tackle don't or, you know, they you don't know. play the run so let's go man let's, <laughs> let's, let's just try to get a a, a fumble <laughs> recovery here you know yeah you know sam or whatever you know yeah yes yeah. uh okay so yeah melvin ingram we talked about it probably longer than it needed to be talked about yeah, but yeah probably. um <laughs> All right, that's it from us, Raider Nation. We appreciate everyone for tuning in. This is the Tape Don't Lie Raiders Film Channel. We appreciate you guys. Make sure you click the subscribe button. Make sure you click the download button if you're listening to this on Apple or Spotify so that the episodes are downloaded straight into your device. Also, make sure you, make sure you hit up Manscaped, okay? You can get 20% off plus free shipping on any order from Manscaped if you use the promo code TDL. Holiday season right around the corner. Get something for uh, your dad, get something for your husband, ladies. You know, whatever it is, Manscaped, it's, it's not only is it going to help him look fresh, but it's also going to help support the channel. So we appreciate you guys. Uh, that's it, Raider Nation. Be easy. Peace.